talking about. Okay, this is a better outfit. No? Okay, so for today's lesson, we will be talking about the business plan. Um, for the business plan, I have to discuss because I'm not sure if I would have the topic na to, or I would have the time if we fit in the synchronous uh, session. Natin. But uh, nonetheless, I'll be discussing this because this just serves as an overview of the entire topic for the business planning. Because along the way, we will be dealing with this. Naman. So uh, hopefully this helped. Um, Natin, since this will be part of your major peta in the future. Uh, for this one, for today's lesson, the basis or kung saan ko kinuha, my source, is from the book of Dr. Eduardo Morato. Um, it is called Entrepreneurship for K-12. So, pwede nyo siyang basahin, pwede nyo siyang browse if you have the time. But, um, lahat naman na nandun sa book, uh, i relay ko naman sa inyo through this video. Moving on. Of course, um, why do we need to discuss the business plan? Bakit ba natin pinag-uusapan or bakit ba kailangan ng isang business plan? Um, the business plan serves the people or it serves as a guide for the people that are at stake and yun nakikinabang at makikinabang dun sa mismo negosyo mo. So, who are the people that are at stake with your business? So, we have the investors, the shareholders, we have, of course, the entrepreneurs itself. This way, you can observe or you'll have an idea if may maganda bang pupuntahan yung mismo negosyo. This serves as a guide and at the same time, dito mo makikita kung tama ba yung mga desisyon na ginagawa mo. Tama ba yung mga um, uh, pag-yes mo dun sa mga deals na sinasabi ng mga uh, people that are around you, the managers. The, the the people that are in charge when it comes to your departments. So, this way, malalaman natin kung um, meron ba talaga pupuntahan yung isang negosyo or wala. Uh, it conveys to investors and cautious financiers the soundness and the potential of a business. Now, what do we mean by that one? Um, a lot of investors don't have the time para umupo and tingnan, pakinggan ka. We have what we call pitching na nangyayari when you have an idea. In this pitching, sinasabi mo kung ano yung konsepto of the business itself to potential investors. Now, not all investors have the time to listen to you. They can give um, a few minutes, an hour, para makinig sa'yo. They don't have that, okay? So, what they do is they just get a copy of your business plan. This way, they would know Ah, ito pala yung uh, gagawin niya when it comes to the marketing. Ito yung possible or forecasted na finances niya. Ito yung makukuha kong sales when I try to invest in that particular business. Now, that way, you can convince your customers or your potential investors into investing dun sa mismong negosyo mo. So, again, the business plan serves as a guide. Navigational course para dun sa mga uh, makikinabang dun sa isang negosyo. Now, with that, of course, we have an outline. Meron tayong format na kailangan sundan. Now, the first part, or yung nasa pinakaharap, of course, is the cover. Now, in the cover, it contains, of course, a title page, list of figures, list of appendices, list of tables, table of contents. Lahat yan makikita dun sa cover mismo. Okay? Now, the first part of your business plan contains the introduction. In the introduction itself, in the introduction part, this should be concise but powerful. This could, uh, this should be able to convince the readers into reading more of the business itself. The introduction has two parts. The first part being the business model and the business concept. You will be discussing para saan yung negosyo mo. How does the business get its revenue? San siya kumukuha ng kita? San siya kumukuha ng sales? What are my distribution channels? When we talk about the business models, it talks about the channels. Saan ngayon nanggagaling yung sales? Paano ko ngayon nade-deliver sa customers ko lahat ng mga sales or yung mga products or yung mga services that I am offering? So, am I a franchising type of business? Am I a direct selling type of business? Am I a um, parang brick and mortar approach? Am I an app-based, web-based type of business model? We will be discussing this on our operational topic. But the second part talks about your democracies. Okay? When we talk about the democracies, it talks about your vision, mission, objectives, 
KRAs and PIs. So what are KRAs and PIs? KRA stands for Key Results Areas and PI stands for Performance Indicators. Now, what do we mean by this one? And how important is your democracies? When we talk about your business goals, in general, the democracies talks about the goals, talks about the long-term prospects of the enterprise itself. Now, your vision, your vision is what you want to become. Para, uh, saan papunta? Yung mismo negosyo mo. What do you want to be in the next five years? But a vision should have time. Okay? Meron ka dapat um, tinatarget na time. In the next five years, in the next ten years, I want to be what? That is the vision. In the vision, this is the point of direction where your business is going, where you want to go as an enterprise. Now, moving on from that, we have the mission. The mission is the purpose. Bakit ka gumawa ng negosyo? Why did you do this business in the first place? What makes you think that this has a potential? Okay? Now, um, in this one, we talk about um, the value of the enterprise itself. We talk about um, who we are and what we value as an enterprise. This is what we stand for. That is the mission. Okay? Ang vision, pwedeng nagbabago yan. Every 5 years, every 10 years, pwedeng nagbabago yan. But a mission should never change. Why? This is the sole purpose. The purpose as to why I put this uh, business in the first place. And then the vision, that is what I am aiming for. Okay? Now, moving on from that, we have the objectives. Your objectives, however, ito naman yung tinitingnan natin, mga business owners, para matansya if are we reaching our vision and mission. Okay? Nare-reach ba natin si vision and mission? We have the objectives para makita yan. Okay? Now, your objectives, this is how you gauge. Okay? Dito mo minimeasure kung uh, ano yung success nung mismo, uh, kung nare-reach mo ba yung um, mismo mission and vision mo. Okay? How do we do that? These are the measurable result translation of the mission and vision itself. How do we measure our objectives? Our objective should contain the four functions of business. Meron ka dapat isang objective for your marketing, isang objective for your finance, for your operations, and for your HR. Okay? Now, how do we measure our objectives? We have our KRAs and PIs. Our KRAs are the key results area or the qualitative measurements. Okay? Qualitative yan. Let's say that um, my objective is to have this sum of money. Okay? So what are the qualities that I am looking for? Yun yung tinitingnan naman natin we are, when we are talking about the KRAs. Followed by our um, PIs or your performance indicators. When we talk about the performance indicators, this talks about the quantity. Quantitative measurements of where the business is going. Okay. For example, I don't know if you're familiar with my example, but my example is um, Double Happiness. Okay, um, This company, the Double Happiness, vision niya is to establish a commanding presence and market leadership as a food chain servicing major bus terminals in Central Luzon within the next five years. Their mission is to provide quality food and passenger convenience services that will generate sufficient profits and improve the life of its employees. If you look at their vision, makikita niyo dito na uh, meron silang time na in-indicate that they want to reach this particular vision in the next five years. And at the same time, there is a specific area where they want to reach this particular goal. Okay? So, gusto nila na in Central Luzon, in the next five years, ito yung mangyayari dun sa mismo negosyo nila. Now, how do they measure this one? They have different objectives to go along with that one. Their first objectives, um, when it comes to their marketing, is establishing a strong market presence in Central Luzon. How would you know if you have already have a strong uh, and you were able to have or establish a strong market presence in that specific areas. Dito ngayon lumalabas ang KRAs natin, yung key results areas and ang performance indicators natin. Um, going back again, when you are trying to do your democracies, you have to make sure that everything is aligned. Okay? 
from the vision mission until dun sa mismo performance indicator mo, you have to make sure that everything goes well together. Okay? So, when we have your objectives, nakuha mo na yung dun sa apat na four functions of business mo. If you're looking at your marketing, if I want to have a strong market presence, that is my objective for my marketing, how can I measure that when it comes to the quality? Okay? We're looking at the KRAs first. So, the key results areas, probably dito papasok, ilang number of food outlets ba yung kailangan ma-establish ko? Ilan din ba yung sales volume na hinahanap ko? And, kano kalaki yung market share that I have when it comes to the industry? So, those are the qualities that I am looking for. But, in a business, numbers talk. Okay? Numbers game talaga kapag negosyo. That's why, hindi pwedeng puro qualities lang yung indicators that you have. You need to have some sort of numbers to back up your data. So, dito lumalabas si performance indicators. Now, you're talking about quantitative measurements. If I am looking for the number of food outlets, ilang number of food outlets yung kakailanganin ko to say that I am fully established in Central Luzon. Okay? Next one, if I am looking at the sales volume, gano kalaking sales ba yung tinitingnan ko? Is it 7 million? Is it 5 million? Is it 10 million? Less than 13 million? Less than uh, 15 million? Is that the, uh, the measurement that I am looking for? Next one, if I am looking for market share, gano kalaki yung market share na hinahanap ko when it comes to my business? Having 1% of the market share is actually really hard. Kasi you have to remember that you're not only looking at your business when you are measuring your market share, you're also looking at your competitors and the overall sales of the industry itself. So yung negosyo ko, gano kalaki yung naambag niya dun sa buong industry in that specific area. Do I have 1%? Do I have 2%? Do I have 0.0001% dun sa entire industry? Gano kalaki yung pumapasok na sales sa akin? And gano kalaki yung effect nun when it comes to the industry? If that would be my goal. Everything that you're doing for your remotes will always um, depend on you as business owners, as stakeholders. Is it smart? Is it something that is attainable? Is it something that is timely? Is it something na kakayanin ninyo? Is it something na marireach talaga na? So you have to make sure that everything that you're doing for your remotes is aligned and at the same time, kakayanin ninyo talaga sila based on the strategies that you want. Because your remotes, ito yung tinitingnan ngayon ng mga marketers, ito yung tinitingnan natin as stakeholders, kung meron bang pupuntahan yung mismo negosyo. Although these are long-term prospects, uh, ito yung uh, direction na pupuntahan natin. Para ma-reach natin yung mission ng ating negosyo, we have to have a concrete vision. Meron tayo in the next 5 years, these are the things that I want. In the next 10 years, these are the things that I want. Ano yung mga milestones na gusto mo? Okay? To reach your vision, you should have your objectives. To reach your objectives, you have some sort of uh, KRAs and you have some sort of performance indicators. Lahat ng yan dapat may basis. Hindi pwedeng nanguhula ka lang kapag gumagawa ka ng remokrapiya at kapag gumagawa ka ng isang negosyo. Malinaw ba? Malinaw ba? Malinaw ba? Okay. Next. Moving on from that one, the next part is the executive summary. Now, ang executive summary, hindi yan yung summary ng kung sino yung... Um, CEO, sino yung mga um, board of directors, hindi yan yun. When we talk about the executive summary, the executive summary is the synthesis of the entire plan. It is the summarization of the entire thing that I am about to see in that business plan. Bakit mahalaga sa executive summary? As I've mentioned a while ago, um, a lot of business owners don't have the time. Time is of luxury. So, para sa amin, uh, para sa maraming investors, executive summary lang yung kailangan nilang masahin para malaman kung should I push through with reading on this business or uh, should I just ignore this type of business kasi marami na sila. This must contain the major arguments or the major things why the business could work. So, what do we mean by that one? Hindi lahat 
nasa executive summary. Kaya nga siya summary eh. Lahat ng strengths ng, bis- ng business mo, kailangan ilagay mo dun sa executive summary. Lahat ng sa tingin mo, edge mo when it comes to um, that particular industry, ilagay mo na siya dun sa mismo executive summary. You think that you have the best marketing plan? Go ahead and discuss some of the points that makes your marketing plan the best. Um, sa tingin mo ba that um, your forecast when it comes to your sales, when it comes to your um, future plans um, ng inyong sales ay mataas, so ilagyan mo rin, uh, ilagay mo rin siya dun sa mismo executive summary mo. Keep in mind that an executive summary should not contain everything. Okay? It should not contain all of the things that I am looking for. Or not. it should not contain all the points uh, of your business plan. It should only contain the things that you're proud of, the things that you're highlighting. So, tingin mo, um, the product itself is your strength, the packaging itself is your strength. Yun, yun, yun lang yung mga ilalagay mo. So, the executive summary is actually written last. So, um, this way, the good qualities of the business, proponents, and the of its partners, dito lilitaw yan. Technology na ginamit mo, yung kakaiba dun sa negosyo mo, dyan mo yan iha-highlight. Everything that's good about the business itself should be highlighted in this part. Only the things that are important, only the things that is part of your strength, yun lang ilalagay sa executive summary. Be careful not to give everything in the executive summary. Why? Kailangan ma-engage na lang ang readers ninyo para basahin ko yung mismo business plan mo. Kasi kung um, hindi naman pala interesting yung inyong executive summary, hindi ako may engage at hindi ko tutuloy-tuloy yun. Okay? Um, to this example, if I'm interested with your marketing plan, nakita ko dyan sa executive summary mo that your marketing is outstanding, tapos um, may kakaiba kang gagawin, I, all the details that I will be looking for, babasahin ko dun sa marketing plan mo. So, I will keep reading. So, um, let's say that part of the strengths or the highlights na ginawa mo is that um, lalaki yung sales mo ng tuloy-tuloy. Tapos, um, millions, billions yung kikitain ng mag- potential investors mo when they invest in your business. So, I will be reading on with your financial uh, financial plan dun sa ibang parts ng business plan mo kasi naging interested and naging invested ako dun sa mismo business plan. Again, only the highlights of the entire plan should be part of this one. So, minimum of two pages, uh, maximum rather, of two pages, yun lang yung buong synthesis na yan. Um, sa amin before, kapag gumagawa kami ng isang executive summary, kahit, kahit pa 200 pages yan, ang executive summary dapat hindi lumalagpas sa 2 pages lang. Kasi, again, highlights lang yun nilalagay mo. Okay? Moving on. Next is about your business proponents. When you talk about your business proponents, you're talking about the organizers and the stakeholders. Organizers, kayo yan. What are your capabilities? What are the things that are good sa inyo, bakit kayo gumawa ng ganyang negosyo, bakit yan yung strength ninyo, what are the contributions of each member, lahat yan sasabihin nyo in that part. The second one is the stakeholders. When you're talking about the stakeholders, you talk about your resource mobilizers, um, financial backers, investors, you also need to talk about the technology providers uh, for your business. You'll also be talking about the governance, the top management, uh, operating, and the support team behind everything that you're going to do for your business. Again, kapag sinabi natin stakeholders, everyone that are at stake dun sa mismo negosyo mo. Okay. Also, part of that is what we call market research. Okay. Para sa isang market research. Kung kayo ay merong research na ginagawa na an entire subject, we also have market research. Now, in a market research, the entrepreneur should be able to extract at makuha kung sino ba yung potential market ko. You need to exert all of your effort in finding out who is the right target market for you. Why? At the end of the day, ayaw mo naman na nagsayang ka ng efforts mo dahil lang sa nanguhula ka kung sino yung market mo. 
or hinuhulaan mo para kanino ba yung produkto na ginagawa mo. You don't want that in your business. So what do you do? Okay? As an entrepreneur, you need to figure out how you could find your target market. So by doing what? Okay? You try to filter them out. Pini filter mo sila when it comes to their demographics, when it comes to their behavior, psychographics, technological factors, all of the factors that you're looking for. Na masasabi mo that my target market is this age, this gender, this particular behavior. Pa, uh, bumibili sila ng produkto pag ganito yung nangyayari sa kanila. They are triggered into buying this product because of this and that. Those are part of your marketing search. Okay? That is, again, an entire topic na pag-aaralan natin and it discuss natin later on. The fourth part of our business plan is the target market. Since you've already figured out who is your target market through your market research, this way, you will be explaining to us as the readers kung ano yung in-expect namin target market mo. Yun nga, i-discuss mo ano yung sufficient size, ano yung um, paying capacity nila, do they have the buying power, um, what is the what interests them into purchasing the product itself? What triggers them into buying? What is the behavior behind that particular behavior? Bakit sila bumibili tuwing recess time? Bakit sa gantong oras lang sila lumalabas? Bakit kaya uh, sila yung target market mo? You need to figure out that one. And all of that discussion will be part of your target market. Dito sa fourth part na yan. Also, in this part, you will be talking about your unique selling proposition or what we call the USP. Most valuable player, most valuable proposition. That's your MVP. Your MVP or your USP is the why. Okay? Why should I buy your product in the first place? Bakit ikaw yung bibilin ko? So you need to tell your customers and you need to tell us, investors, readers, why should we buy and engage with your business? So, for example, dito din lumalabas kung ano yung tagline. When we talk about, um, we find ways. Just do it. Okay? Alam mo kung sino yung mga businesses na yan. And what is the meaning behind that one? Bakit kaya yun yung mga sinasabi nila every time that they try to sell their product? What is something that it appeals to their customers? For example, BDO. We find ways. Why? Apparently, in the banking industry, sila yung pinaka, pinaka readily available na nandyan palagi. Marami silang ATM, uh, nauna sila when it comes to online banking, uh, makikita mo sila sa lahat ng malls, especially sa mga SM malls. Okay? Uh, makikita mo sila sa mga uh, supermarket, nandyan sila sa iba't ibang lugar, lagi silang available. Because again, part of their USP is we find ways. So, you need to have the, that some sort of USP. Ano yung tatatak sa tao whenever they hear your product? Whenever they try to buy your product, ano yung sa tingin mo tatatak sa kanila? Ano yung maaalala nila sa inyo? Ano yung rason kung bakit nila kayo pupuntahan at bibilin ng paulit-ulit? Having triers is okay. But having only triers is a bad, bad business. Eh, bakit? Goes to show na magaling lang kayo sa una. Also, goes to show na hindi kayo consistent. Goes to show that um, kaya ako nag-try because I was curious. Maganda yung marketing mo. Okay siya. But, hindi mo ko na -retain. Having loyal customers, repeat customers, is something good at kailangan ingatan ng lahat ng nagnedegosyo. Yun yung pinaka goal ninyo why you're doing business in the first place because you don't want first-time buyers lang palagi, right? You can only serve this sufficient size, this amount of people. So, kailangan ingatan mo sila. Yung sampu na bumili sa'yo, kung two times a week sila bumibili sa inyo, that's already a profitable business on your end. Pero kung yung sampu na yan, bumili, yung sampung tao bumili sa inyo, tapos hindi na sila bumalik, What's the reason behind it? Bakit dun sa sampu na yun, lima lang yung bumalik? What's the reason behind it? You need to figure out if your target market has something to say about your business, has something to say about your product, and at the same time, ano yung magiging comments, uh, future improvements na kakailanganin mo, and is your USP enough para ma-retain sila? Being different 
in the business is quite hard nowadays. Ang hirap mag-stand out yung negosyo mo, ang hirap na maging kakaiba, kaya kakailanganin mong ingatan kapag meron ka ng loyal customers. Kailangan din enough yung binibigay mo dun sa mga customers mo para magtiwala sila sa inyo ng buo. The next one is discussing the market. In the market itself, this is where you discuss market justifications. When we talk about market justifications, you talk about the supply and demand. So, of course, um, this is estimating the total market supply and then paano siya ngayon makaka-affect dun sa demand ng mga tao, paano ka ma-affect as an enterprise. Um, as I've said before, kapag may control ang mga suppliers ninyo sa inyo bilang isang enterprise, mahihirapan kayo magkaroon ng edge. Uh, mahihirapan kayong i-increase lang basta yung presyo or palit-palitan yung presyo uh, kasi nga yung suppliers ninyo yung nag indicate kung kailangan ba o okay ba na mag-adjust ka ng pricing mo. Okay? So, it kind of affects um, how the business runs kung uh, medyo volatile ang ating ekonomiya. The next one. Next one is about the macro environmental factors. Uh, when we talk about the macro environmental factors, these are the things that you cannot control. Wala kang control sa mga bagay-bagay na to. These are factors that are outside um, your control. Therefore, you as a business, you need to adapt to that. So, what are these macro environmental factors? These are social and cultural environmental factors. You also need to talk about the political and legal um, environmental factors, economic. Um, you also need to talk about the ecological, the technological environmental factors. So, how does these factors affect the enterprise itself and paano kayo mag adapt as an enterprise? With this pandemic going on, paano kayo naapektuhan, paano sa tingin ninyo nakakapag-adjust yung mga enterprises that are still alive. Okay? In the market, in the discussion of the market, we also need to discuss on the industry dynamics. So, for the industry dynamics, you need to talk about who are the competitors. Sino yung mga nandun sa mismo industry? So, sino yung kalaban mo? Sino yung alternative sa business mo? Who would be the substitutes? Sino yung pwede pumalit sa inyo? Remember, if you are some type of business, for example, you're a milky business, you're not just going to look for um, uh, milky as your competitors. You need to look at all the substitutes also. So, you're also looking at the coffee industry, you're also looking at other beverages, other um, things na pwede nilang ipamalit sa pag-consume nila ng milk tea. So, let's say, uh, instead na nag-milk tea ako, nag-coffee ako today. Instead na nag-milk tea ako, I drink um, soda today. So, these are alternatives to your business and can affect your future sales. So, you need to look at who are your competitors. Not just the people that are inside the industry, the milk tea industry itself, but also other forces or other um, substitutes to the business. You also need to look at um, the suppliers, kung sino mga suppliers ni Ginto, suppliers nila, ng mga competitors mo. When you're looking at your competitors, you're not just going to look at how much uh, yung sales nila, ano yung mga binibenta nila. You also need to look at how they operate. What are their best practices? How do they get their supplies? What is their distribution channel? Um, sila ba ay available sa Grab, sa Food Panda? Sila ba ay for pick-up lang, for delivery lang? So, how do the business works and how does that affect their sales? So, paano ka ngayon matutulungan ng mga best practices that they have para ma-adapt mo doon sa mismo negosyo mo. And then, the last one that you need to discuss when you're talking about the market is, of course, market share. Okay. Market share is um, a very difficult topic to actually discuss without visuals. Okay? So, intro, kung may pa-visuals man ako, hello. Okay? So, when you are talking about estimated market share, okay, in-estimate mo pa lang, in a business plan, these are plans. Ito yung mga nas nakikita mo, nakuforsee mo. So, this serves as your estimate na ang estimated market share mo ay blank 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 because an estimated market share is calculated by taking the company sales, okay? Company sales over the period time, okay? 
and dividing it by the total sales of the industry in the same period. Okay. For example, for example, in the industry of phones, okay, sa lahat na nagbibenta ng cellphone, let's say that I am Samsung. Okay? Let's say that I am from Samsung. What is my market share? For the period of 2019, let's say 2019, um, ang market share ko ay 20, 20%. 20% of the entire industry kinakain ni Samsung. I have that um, basis that all of the sales for that um, or my sales affect 20% of the entire industry. So you need to have some sort of basis. Dapat alam mo kung ano yung total sales ng buong industry na yon in that particular year and kung magkano yung total sales ng mismong negosyo mo in that entire year. So I'll be showing you a table here, a table of um, smartphones. For the smartphones, makikita natin that 20% of the entire industry at uh, in the second quarter of 2018, makikita natin that 20%, 20.9% of the entire industry were Samsung. Okay? Followed by Huawei with 15.8%. Followed by Apple. Apple only has 12.1%. And then followed by Xiaomi, Oppo, and other phones. Okay, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Having 1% of the entire market is very hard. Masasabi mo na, ah hindi, 1% yung nakukuha ko sa buong Pilipinas. Okay? We're talking about the world here. Okay? Global market share to, yung pinapakita ko sa inyo dito. But assuming that, assuming that, for example, in the entire Luzon, gano kalaki yung market share mo? In the, in, um, in Metro Manila, gano kalaki yung market share mo? Uh, Paliitin pa natin, in Manila, in Sampalo, in your area, dun sa radius ko na yun, what is my market share? Dun mo malalaman, or dun mo makikita, kung sino yung mga kalaban mo, sino yung mga katapat mo, sino yung substitutes mo, and paano ka ngayon, paano naapektuhan kapag nag-operate ka at hindi ka nag-operate yung buong industry and yung buong market. For example, if you're hungry, pag nagugutom ka, what comes to your mind na gusto mong kainin? Is it Jollibee, McDo, KFC, Mang Inasal, Burger King, or some other karinderia or some other food na makikita mo or existing? Let's say, um, puno na si McDonald's. Let's say you have 50% dyan sa buong UST, 50% ng mga kumakain sa McDo. Lalo na pag umaga, yung mga pa-ice coffee ninyo, pag nalilate kayo, ay, naku, ay, ay, ramdam ko yun, I feel you. Okay, pero yung mga pa-ice coffee, yung mga pa-burger ninyo, quick runs, um, gusto nyo na McDonald's kasi it's, it's quick and easy and at the same time, it's affordable para sa inyo. That's why you wanted to go for McDonald's. Now, if um, masyado mahaba yung pila, doon ka sa pangalawang option mo. Mahaba pa rin pila, doon ka sa pangatlong options mo. Okay. So, pang ilan ka, doon sa iisipin ng mga tao as part of their options. So, yun yung halaga ng isang market share. Um, dito mo makikita kung pinipili ka ba nila, bumibili ba talaga sila sa inyo, or dinadaan-daan ka lang ng mga tao. Ilang percent ka dun sa mga pinipili ng mga tao when they have different and a lot of options available. The sixth part is about the products and the services. So, this one, you will only be discussing on the description of the product itself, how it evolved uh, from the concept to the product pitching to the prototyping hanggang dun sa final output niya. And then you also need to have some sort of justifications. Bakit yan yung nilagay nyo when it comes to the quality? Bakit sinabi nyo yung durable? Bakit sinabi nyo um, affordable yung product ninyo? Bakit sinabi mo na um, Maganda yung produkto ninyo, it is um, influencer friendly, it is something that is for Gen Z, for millennials. Bakit? What are the justifications? Ano yung mga data to back up na magsasabi na this is the reason why this product exists. This is the reason why this product is this and that. Okay? So, kailangan lang merong dahilan bakit mo sinasabi yan. Hindi pwede nang uhula ka lang na, Ah, it's durable, pero hindi mo siya ever na-test. So, pwedeng sabihin na high quality yung isang product, 
na binili mo lang sa tiyanghian, yung um, raw materials niyan, never mo din siya na-test, may mas better pa pala dyan na alternative for that particular raw material. So, you need to understand that when you're creating a concept in mind, you're not just going to think about the final output, but how you put things together as well. So, lahat ng pagdadaanan, experimentations, prototyping, lahat ng trials and errors na gagawin ninyo, all of that will go in this part. The next part is about the enterprise strategy and the enterprise delivery system. Now, when we are talking about the enterprise strategy, okay, the enterprise strategy is mapping out competitive landscape and uh, competitive landscape by situating the enterprise and its competitors as their strategies and chosen positioning. Okay. Positioning is important. I think we need to discuss that particular topic later on um, sa marketing because um, positioning determines how do you place your products in the mind of your customers. Ano yung gusto mong isipin nila whenever they think about your product. Now, in the enterprise strategy, um, dito, of course, ni meeting na mo kung paano mo ilay out lahat ng mga magiging plano mo. Ano ngayon yung mga um, techniques na gagawin mo in order for you to reach on your four functions. Now, when you're talking about the EDS, uh, EDS stands for the Enterprise Delivery System. You talk about your inputs, your throughputs, your outputs, and your outcomes. Gano ka importante itong mga pagdadaanan na to ng isang negosyo. Your enterprise delivery system enables the company to implement the strategies na involve mo dun sa enterprise strategy. Gets? So, what are the inputs? When you're talking about the inputs, I said that um, this is already part of the operations. Okay? Operations na to ah. The overview pa lang naman to. So, when you're talking about the inputs, you are going to talk about your 6 M. So, that talks about the money, men, machineries, um, materials, methods, and management. So, dito, pag-uusapan nyo lahat ng ipapasok mo dun sa mismo negosyo. That's why it's called inputs. Throughputs. Throughputs is the process. Paano mo ipoproseso lahat ng ipinasok mo dun sa isang negosyo? How were you able to process the money, the capital that went to your business? How were you able to process the people that um, that you put inside the business itself? The materials, the raw materials na ipinasok mo, paano mo siya pinproseso? Did you do the manufacturing? Did you do um, some sort of assembly line? Lahat yan discuss mo dyan. And then, how did you manage? What are the methods that you did during your um, overall operations? Now, why is that important? The reason why you're doing this one is because you want to have pa positive outcomes. Inputs, process, the throughputs. And then, outputs. Your outputs is the products. Yung produkto nyo, yung services ninyo, lahat ng ginawa ninyo para dun sa mga negosyo ninyo. Bakit mo ka kailanganin na magkaroon ng positive outcomes? You are looking at your QDP, Quality, Delivery, and Price Expectations. So, what are they expecting dun sa mismo negosyo mo in terms of the quality? Maganda ba yan? Durable ba? Um, affordable ba? Um, maganda ba yung pagkakagawa? Um, masyado ba ang... Uh, masyado bang matagal yung mismo delivery time. So, when you're talking about delivery, how was uh, the product delivered to the customer? Nakarating ba sa akin on time? Nakarating ba sa akin ng maayos? Nakarating ba sa akin na uh, hindi ako nagkakaroon ng delays, ng problema? Um, when you are buying online, when you're buying online, you look for a certain thing. Uh, nagsisearch muna kayo, di ba? Diyan sa pagsisearch ninyo, makikita nyo that um, you're not just going to look at the price mismo. Okay? There are reviews na tinitingnan ninyo, there are things, descriptions that you're also looking para alam nyo kung ano yung ine-expect ninyo. I paid for this much. I paid for this amount of money. That's why I am expecting this and that. Okay? Pwede mura ko siya binayaran. That's why hindi ako mag-expect na makukuha ko siya the next day. Hindi rin ako mag-expect na maganda yung mismong quality niya. Para masabi mo that that particular product is worth it. What is the QDP? What is the quality, delivery, and price expectations of your customers? Lahat ng yan masasagot mo through the EDS. Dito mo masasagot yan if you know how did you process all of the inputs, uh, was it the right output na ina-expect ng negosyo mo, and was it delivered to your customers? 
how did they react? Lahat yan makakita mo sa outcomes. What you want as an enterprise is again positive outcomes for your business. What you want is to have good reviews para bumalik sila ng bumalik dun sa mismo negosyo mo. And that can only happen if the, Q, uh, the EDS was right. Uh, moving on from that one, we will also be discussing on the marketing and human resources. When we are talking about the marketing, we are going to talk about the marketing mix. Okay? The marketing mix consists of the seven pieces of marketing. So we have the product, price, place. Um, we also have packaging, positioning. Um, we also have promotion, of course, and people. Bakit importante ang seven pieces of marketing? The marketing mix serves as the business strategy. Para ma-sustain mo kung ano, on how you operate, kailangan meron ka mga strategies na ilalay out. And yung business strategy mo will come from the marketing function itself. Bakit? Kung mapapansin ninyo that the seven piece doesn't only contain the promotions. Marketing is not just about the ads, it's not just about the promotions, it's about everything involving your business itself. Also, part of the seventh chapter, which is the EDS in the enterprise strategy, we also need to discuss on the human resources. So for the human resources naman, we will be discussing on the eight R's of human resources. So, ano yung mga importance nila, um, and then discuss natin yan as part of HR. Um, it's another topic, again, um, overview pa lang naman to. Um, sasabihin natin kung ano yung importance ng mga recruiting part, routing, ng mga uh, retaining, resonating, how you can be able to um, take care of the employees, how can you retain them, how can you make them stay dun sa mga enterprises ninyo, and discuss din natin yan. Okay? Uh, having said that, we will also be discussing on the benefits, um, kung ano yung mga compensation and benefits na nakukuha ng isang empleyado sa isang kumpanya, ano yung mga mandatory at hindi mandatory, ano yung mga kakailanganin ng isang empleyado when you are going to employ and become employees in the future. The next part, the eighth part, is about the financial statements. So, for the financial statements, of course, may mga numbers na tayong involved dito. In this chapter, in this chapter, I would be asking you to create financial forecasts for your businesses. You will also be dealing with expected returns, what are the risks, and what are the contingencies involved dyan sa mismo mga business plans ninyo. So, we will be discussing on income statement, balance sheets, um, ano ba ba? cash flows, break-even analysis. We will also be discussing on the ROIs, ROE, and ROA, which is return of investments, return of assets, and return on sales. So, dito makikita natin kung meron ba talagang magandang pupuntahan yung mga business ideas natin. Kasi, um, what we don't realize is, a lot of business fails because they fail to forecast. They fail to, to prepare. So, um, this way, in your financial statements, this way, we could be able to help you if that particular business is worth trying. Meron ba talagang future dyan? Meron ba talagang kikitain yan? Or masyado bang matagal bago ka kumita ng malaking pera? Um, can you wait for that particular um product or um, idea to actually grow and have sales on your end or baka hindi mo kakayanin magintay that's why you wanted to shift into a different business so uh, you have to expect that there are a lot of money that are involved in any type of business so base dyan magbe-base lahat ng mga risk na papasukan ninyo that's why you need to have or you need to be able to be prepared is it the kind of risk that is worth taking or next time na lang. Or kapag malago na yung uh, pera mo, kung meron ka ng, um, kung kakayanin na ng heart mo na mag pumasok at mag-engage dyan sa mismong negosyo or hindi. Okay? The last part is of course the environmental and regulatory compliance. You will be talking about some type of rules, regulations that you need to follow um, for that particular business. Meron ba mga special law that you need to be aware of when you have or when you deal into a certain business or um, meron ka bang mga mababanggang tao, may mga um, mababangga ka ba when it comes to your environment. 
dyan sa part na yan, i-discuss natin siya. So, all of the things, all of these things will be discussed um, for the future. This serves as an overview. Ito yung gagawin natin, why we have business planning. Okay? Business plan is an important tool for any type of business. It is a guide para sa atin kung tama ba yung ginagawa natin or hindi. Um, to be honest, um, ang business plan talagang mahalaga yan and ginagamit natin yan para nga uh, alaman kung tama ba, kung okay ba yung ginagawa natin. So, we need to understand right, the purpose of the business plan. Okay, so yun lang naman, yun lang naman yung kakailangan ko i-discuss sa inyo for today, for today's topic. Um, that serves as the entire overview of the lecture of business uh, planning. I will be discussing siguro yung business model canvas in the future kapag malapit na kayo magsulat ng inyong business plan para mas makatulong sa inyo. Paano nyo makikita in a one single sheet lahat ng mga magiging plana ninyo. So I just want you guys to be prepared that these are things that I will be looking for and we are looking for for uh, sa inyo as learners. I hope that this helps. This video helps uh, for that discussion. Um, medyo maikli lang to pero hindi naman kailangan mahaba at patagalin at madaming sabihin. Ang kailangan maintindihan ninyo kung ano ba yung mga sinasabi ko. So again, importante ang isang business plan. This serves as a guide for us, for us entrepreneurs, for us um, business leaders. So uh, having this tool helps us prevent any type of problems in the future. Marami akong masasabi sa inyo uh, kapag na isa-isa na natin yung mga four functions. But I just want you to have an overview of um, the future topics. The next topic will be about um, seeking opportunities. Opportunity seeking. We will be talking about the three S of opportunity uh, of opportunities. So we will be talking about seeking opportunity, seizing, and the screening part of that particular opportunities. So I hope this helps. I hope that you learned something today. Keep safe, keep warm, stay inside, and don't go outside. Support local businesses, and that's all. Goodbye!